G'day, Keith Conlon. Glad you could join us on Postcards. Today, I'm in a laboratory, but no ordinary lab. This is Art Lab. This is where our precious objects, our state treasures, both public and private, are preserved and restored. They're working, for instance, on this magnificent Bible. It's been in a South Australian family for generations, and it was printed in England in 1763 by a John Baskerville. That might ring a bell. This typeface here, well, it is Baskerville. He invented it. It's a font that you may well have in your computer. We're still using it today. And back to the Baskerville Bible for a moment. It was such a huge publication job in the 1700s that it nearly drove the Cambridge University Press broke. Don't know if you've noticed, but King Edward VII over there and his pedestal have recently had 90 years of grime carefully removed. Now, who does that? Well, luckily for us, there's an internationally regarded organisation that looks after statues, precious books, museum objects, old paintings, and a whole lot more. It's called Art Lab, and it lives just in there, off North Terrace. Folk at Art Lab have been the keepers of our treasures for 26 years now, painstakingly maintaining and preserving the art gallery, museum and national trust collections, as well as private and commercial pieces from all over Australia. So this book, for example, this is from the State Library's collections. Uh, it's a wonderful work of uh, engravings and it dates from Napoleon's conquest of Egypt. It's pieces like this in need of some TLC that Art Lab director Andrew Durham says keeps his team inspired. But their interest goes beyond just the object itself. There's always a wonderful story behind things. That's what always intrigues me. It could, the, the object itself could be fairly um, uh, nondescript, like a, a child's um, cardigan, for example, but it might be from the Migration Museum. But then it's the story behind that, because it belonged to a, a, a young girl who came out here from Scotland, for, exa for, for argument's sake, in, in 1850. It's that sort of story. So lots of things are intriguing in their own way. Intriguing? In the textiles lab, they don't get much more intriguing than this. It's the original Eureka flag. Yep, this is the very flag that flew above Ballarat's Bakery Hill in 1854 as Victoria's gold miners set up the stockade in their battle against exorbitant taxes, unforgiving troops and unreasonable officialdom. As you can see, it's, um, it's not in fabulous condition. Uh, nearly 40% is missing, most of which has happened from souveniring. When people would come to look at the flag, they would be given a small piece. So that's where all these large sections are missing. Particularly where you're seeing a straight edge, that's where a section has been cut away. Kristen and Mary Ann have spent eight months forensically identifying and stabilising the types of fabric, then painstakingly repairing the rips and insect damage before re-stitching the flag to a new backing. The stitching is so fine, I can just see it across there, and that process took us about 300 hours. So that was definitely the, the, um, the, the most challenging part of that work. It's Australia's most potent symbol of democracy, so it's appropriate that its care has been entrusted to Australia's biggest conservation lab. Wander the corridors and you'll likely find all manner of masterpieces in for their regular overhauls. These are here while the Saatchi London exhibition takes their regular place in the art gallery. In the painting lab, another team is working on some masterpieces of a different kind. These doors were once part of the local school at the Uendamu Aboriginal community northwest of Alice Springs. Back in the 80s, the elders recorded their traditional dreaming stories on the doors, but the harsh conditions and graffiti artists have taken their toll. So who are you going to call? Art Lab, of course. This is completely finished now. We've removed the graffiti, we've surface cleaned it, but unfortunately, because of the poor quality paints that they've used, that red colour, we can't return that. That's faded and that's gone. But the design, the strong design element is still, still there. You know how Andrew was saying he loves the story behind the object? Well, here in the objects laboratory, this little fella probably takes the cake. He's affectionately known as the shop dummy rabbit. And his story? It involves one surprise after another. The rabbit came from a private collector who asked Justin Gare to give him a bit of a tidy up and in particular to fix his broken arm. 
at the time when, when it was brought in, the, the, the owner didn't know that it was clockwork, and I didn't know that it was clockwork until he disrobed him and I pulled his head out and I saw, saw inside the mechanical uh, or the clockwork mechanism. So we hitched him all back up. His linkages weren't put in properly, and uh, we, I bought a key for him and wound him up and um, um, started him rocking. And, uh, uh, so that was our first surprise. The next surprise came the next day when Heather Brown walked by. Uh, when I came into the lab one morning and came to see Justin about um, another matter, um, I had this strange object was here and um, I had some recollection of uh, a childhood memory. And so I had a look in some of the old photo albums that I had at home and discovered that the rabbit was in fact uh, the rabbit that my parents had in their gift shop at Henley Beach. Yep, it's the one. It held pride of place in her parents' Henley gift shop. It was on Seaview Road. My father was quite an entrepreneur and he used to do all sorts of interesting things to attract customers. And my mother recalls that one day he actually purchased this rabbit from a tobacconist and a hairdresser and used the rabbit to display items um, in the shop to allure people uh, to, to come in or entice them to come in and, and buy things. Another surprise and another mystery solved. It turns out the new owners bought the old shop and the rabbit was still inside. So you're reacquainted with your childhood friend, Heather? Yes, it's one of those synergies of South Australia. It's um, quite an amazing story. It's a very Adelaide story, isn't it? And we couldn't resist recreating the childhood photo. I don't reckon Heather's changed a bit. These stunning pieces, by the way, from the South Australian Museum. But don't forget the conservators here will do a free consultation on your treasures. And they also do regular tours of all five labs. You never know what you're going to see. Free consultations are held on the first and third Tuesday and Thursday of each month. Bookings are essential on 8207 7520. And that's also the number to call to book a tour. So they'll be good to see. And don't forget the Art Lab regular tours. And if you want the details, check them on our website, postcards-sa.com.au. See you next Sunday.